Hey everyone, Leo with the Dreaming Tree, and today we're putting together our Wishing Well pop-up card. Now, as the name suggests, this is a perfect card to send someone that you want to wish well, whether it be because they're going to a new job or getting a new job, a promotion, or if they're not feeling well. Um, anyway, you can obviously omit the optional print and cut caption and turn this into pretty much uh, anything you'd like. You guys are very creative. So I'm sure you'll be able to adapt this for a variety of occasions. Um, either way, let's take a look at what we have here in front of me. Um, we've done one of these before. So just like before, we're gonna start off by getting everything sort of ready and prepped. Uh, there's a wishing well in the center and then there's a set of flowers on the front and the back side. Now you can see here off camera, I already put together one set of the flowers just because um, it's pretty straightforward and also very repetitive, so I wanted to save some time. Uh, but we can begin with that. So you're going to find this piece here. Okay, you can see that I ran that through an embossing machine. And one thing to keep in mind here, there are some large tulips. The largest set of tulips are going to go on the actual wishing well here. There's also one other large tulip that is cut out of this pattern paper that we're using for the top of the wishing well. And that is actually gonna go right here on the print to cut element, okay? And then I believe, yeah, we have a really large tulip, but that is for the envelope, okay? So I'm just kinda trying to help you get all your tulips figured out here. I don't know where my large one went, but nevertheless, there it is, this guy here. This is for the envelope. So just keep that with the envelope. And then the small ones here, you'll see that they, we have a total of seven on each of these, okay? There's two yellow, two purple, two of the pattern color, and then one in the, in our case, the AC cherry. Okay, so uh, let's just jump right in here and just begin getting this all glued together. Now what I like to do with small pieces like this is I'll grab my pick-me-up tool, which you can't buy anymore because someone decided that it's not a popular item, even though I use it all the time. And with something small like this, uh, if you don't have one of these, you can always just get like a little stick and put some of that putty on it. I think it's basically the same thing, like a little skewer, but I just go ahead and dab it in a little bit of glue just to get my glue on the back of it like so, and put this one here, right in the center. Just make sure you get it nice and centered on the green backing here. Pardon my head if it's in the way, my bad. Okay, there we go, and then I'm gonna do the yellow ones. It's a very handy little tool, especially when you're working with tiny little pieces it makes it a lot easier. Okay, there's our first yellow one. Way too much blue on there, that's okay. And then we'll do the next yellow one. You don't need one of these tools. I'm just I'm kind of being fancy, but at the same time, it is a very, very helpful tool. So I like to use it whenever I can. And I'll show you that you can still do this even if you don't have the tool. Um, we're going to go to the purple flower next. And if you're working with uh, tiny pieces like this, typically you don't really want to squeeze too much glue out of the bottle. What I like to do is just kind of squeeze a little out and then just kind of throw a little, couple little dots on the back here and there. You don't need a ton of glue. And then the dots will eventually flatten out when you put them in their final place here. So again, you can totally do it by hand, but I just prefer to use this thing. It makes quick work of it and you don't have to dab it. You can also do the little dot method that I just did while you have it on here. A lot of different ways to get it done. I had a and then um, I was just going off on a tangent here. 
Um, this is the little pattern color, and those are going to go on the end caps here. Uh, I just thought of a science teacher that I had in grade school who tried to tell us that there's not always one way of doing things. And the way that he emphasized that, and I'm sure it wouldn't be very popular nowadays, especially now that I'm a cat lover, he would always say there's more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> and I think about that now when I was in eighth grade and how macabre that was. But I guess it made us pay attention. But I've never even heard of anyone doing that to poor, poor kitties. I have two myself. Couldn't imagine. Okay, so we've got the flowers. Now we're going to take this whole layer and we're going to glue this down onto this little strip here. And that's part of the pop-up mechanism. So we'll want to try to get glue on as many of these little areas as possible just to make sure that everything sticks and doesn't move. And also so that it's nice and reinforced because the little flowers here are pretty delicate. Okay, so just pop that right on top of the little shadow layer there. Just make sure you get everything nice and lined up like so. Press that down. There we go. Should look something like that. And we'll do the same thing on the other one to get that prepped and ready. You want to make sure that you fold this on the little score mark there to get that ready to go. And get our glue on the other one. That's just to kind of fill this out and add some nice pretty flowers to both sides of the wishing well. Okay. And we'll pop that right into place. Getting a little sloppy here. It's okay though. It. That looks nice. Press that down and let that set. Okay. And we'll move on to, we're going to move on to our wishing well here. So let me throw that off to the side. Right, we're going to take these two layers and glue them back to back like so. So that's a very simple little first step. And then we'll just kind of build on that. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom and try to get glue on as much of this as you can, as quickly as you can. you got a lot of surface area here to work with, so I have to be kind of quick. And just line that up as accurately as you can so everything is nice and flush. There we go. Press that down. <clears throat> So the front and back are going to be a little bit different. The front and back both have the little shingles for the little roof, uh, but the front is a little bit different. The back is going to have an area for maybe doing a print and cut or writing a little message. And where is that? No, I actually just did a print and cut on it. I'll have to pull that out here in a second. Okay, but we have to decide. Uh, which side we're going to do the front, which side we're going to do the back. It doesn't really matter. They're both the same. So I'm going to do, this is going to be my front, and we're going to begin by putting this piece in place, this blue piece that has the little, little pail or bucket connected to it. So that's going to go down first. So go ahead and get your glue on this piece. And my glue bottle has a mind of its own right now. I think it's getting tired of crafting. We've been, been crafting for about a day and a half now. Yeah, and that's all over the place. I am not happy with that. I know that's gonna dry clear, but anyway, I think it'll be okay. All right, so we're gonna pop that right in place. Make sure you get that lined up with the pail nicely and that everything matches up on the sides as well. Just like that. Okay, and we have this little dark element, this black element here. And that's going to go right here. 
So go ahead and get your glue on the back of this thing. I'm gonna check my flow here. Okay. And that's gonna go right there, just on top of the little shadow of the little pail there. Perfect, okay. Next, we're gonna find, where are you? Where'd you go? Where'd you go, where'd you go? There you are. I'm gonna find this piece next. This is also cut out of the same pattern that we used for the little roof. So get your glue on that. And you just want to line that up with the, the main part of our little pail here. Okay, now in the center of this guy, one other thing I didn't mention yet is that there's a smaller purple flower there. This, this flower is smaller than the ones that we just applied here. So don't get this one confused with the guys on that section there. Okay, and there is a actually a set of little markers on the pail to help you with the placement of this purple flower. So just make sure you get that nice and centered and nice and aligned. There we go. Okay, and then we have two little strips, almost look like little hot dogs or something. One for the top, one for the bottom of our little pail. So just throw a few little dots of glue on that. You got too much on there, just hit it with your finger, smush it down, and that one's gonna go right here, like so. Press that down, and then we have a smaller one, and that one goes at the bottom. Yeah, so we're just kind of doing some paper piecing here. Some of this stuff is very delicate and small, but it's doable, okay? And then we have this little piece here to give the rope a more of a ropey color. Just throw a few little dots on that. And the round part is gonna be at the bottom. There's a part that kind of looks cut off. That's going up at the top. So just nudge that into place. There we have it. Okay, good. All right, so now we have this little, this, little, uh, this little brick wall sort of thing happening here. And we're gonna glue that down right there. Okay, I actually ran this through my embossing machine. I used a nice little stone embossing folder. That's right. Okay, so that's gonna be nice and flush with the blue layer just below it. Also, just make sure that it's flush with the sides. There we go. Okay. We'll press that down. <clears throat> okay, there we go. So, starting to take shape here. Now, up at the top, as I mentioned, on one side, we have a flower. And actually, we have flower on both sides, right up at the top. So we can get that in place. There we go. This is a fun little card because most of it's paper piecing and then when we get to the actual construction of the mechanism, you'll, you'll find that that's also very straightforward as well. So um, never fear. Okay, so now uh, on the back of this, we've got, there's one piece here that I have to go grab. It's off. Just did a print and cut and I forgot to take it off. But we'll get that in a second. Let's just get this flower in place. Okay. And that's going right up there. And then all that's left on this side is just this little piece here, which you can obviously use for a stamp um, or you can do a print and cut or even if you want to do a, a, a drawing thing where you do your you let your uh, machine draw or write with like a single line font. But let's put the roof together here. And so we're gonna start with the bottom. 
And all we need to do is just line this up, this first part up like this. Okay, and you'll notice that I took these little uh, the scallops here and just kind of flared them out a little bit. So we'll just add glue to this. You don't want to put glue on the actual scallop pieces. Well, you can, you can put them on the side ones. Maybe not all the way down, just almost, so that we can actually flare those up a little bit too. But use the, use the, the little corners there, the rounded corners, to help you with the correct placement of this piece. It should pretty much hug the contour here of the blue part of the roof. And then we can take and kind of lift that up a little bit just to give it a little extra dimension like that. Okay, next I'm gonna take this piece, the second largest piece, and I'm just gonna flare these out a little bit. And this is gonna go right here just kind of using that little dip there as your guide. Okay, and you probably just put glue on maybe the first two thirds of this section, starting from the top. You don't need to go all the way down because we do want those little scallops to flare out just to give this a nice dimensional look. Okay, so there's that. And then finally, the smallest piece here, it's gonna go right up at the top. You can take and flare these little scallops out and again, just do put a little bit of glue right up at the top. And we're gonna match that up with the exi existing little quarter circle or little dip up there. Okay, so there we have it. That's that. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we're just gonna repeat that process one more time. Okay, and we can always kind of flare these out a little bit more later on if we decide we want to give these a little more dimension. Okay. And get that in place. It's all in the details. All these little details really is what sets our files apart from our competition. Okay. So again, probably just the first third or so at the top as far as the amount of glue that you'll need. Just line that up with that little dip. There we have it. And the final one here. Okay. And there we go. Okay. Got to grab one piece here to finish off this section and then we're going to be ready to start putting together the actual structure. Now before I do that though, here's one of the print and cut elements. I'm going to go ahead and glue this little flower. You'll notice that there are some little cutouts there, some little markers to help you with accurate placement of this little flower. So just make sure you use those to your advantage to get everything nice and symmetrical and centered like so. Okay. Okay, so as I mentioned, we do have this one little piece that goes right here. So we just wanna put a little bit of glue on the back and pop that in place. It's gonna have a nice even border all the way around. So just make sure you get that centered like so. There we go, okay. All right, so we're gonna move on to the main structure here. We've got that all ready to go. This being our main structure. And the way this works, obviously we want our, we want our texture side out. Okay, make sure you get everything nice and pre-folded to make things easier on us. Okay, so this is essentially how the structure is gonna work like this. Okay, and these are the sides. This is the top, this is the bottom. And I've got actually a couple things I gotta fold here. Okay, so before we get started in actually building the mechanics of this, I'm gonna lay this out flat. And we're gonna add our panels here. Okay, there's a total of six. Now obviously, this one here, this is the main focal point here. And we're just gonna pop that right 
onto each of these sections, with this one being right here. I'm gonna make sure you get that nice and centered. Okay, so let's get our glue on our panels, get those in place, and then we can begin constructing the rest of this. Again, just trying to make sure you get it centered, nice even borders all the way around. And depending on where you place the first one, you're gonna to want to kind of keep it on that same plane going all the way around. Okay, so continue on here with our glue. Nice and centered. And I'm just looking at the bottom of this one to kind of help me with the placement of this guy here. There we go. And then we'll do one here and then we'll pop over to the other side. Get those three in place. The other three don't have anything special on them since, again, this is gonna be our front. So that's another thing that we'll need to keep in mind as we uh, put the actual well in place because we want, you know, there's two sides to the well, one that has the actual uh, wall on it and the, the pail, the other side that has the spot for writing. We want to make sure that when we put this in, this is facing forward, okay? So we'll flip this around and get the remaining three panels in place. And then we can begin actually assembling the structure. Okay, just make sure that's nice and centered. A couple more to go. Not much to it. Basically everything we've done so far is just paper piecing, so Anyone can do this. And for those of you that made our little Christmas tree pop-up card that's similar to this one, you already have the experience. All we're doing is just kind of swapping out the focal point in the center. Okay, get that one in place. There we go. Okay, wonderful. <clears throat> okay, so here's where we're going to start putting these pieces in place here. Okay, I'm going to fold this the other way, make that a valley fold. Okay, so again, remember with our wishing well, we're going to slide that through the center. And of course, we want this, this to be facing the little caption on the front. Okay, I'm going to bring that down all the way. You're going to pull it as far as it goes until it won't go any further. And we've got these pieces here. Okay, what we're gonna, we're using these as little stoppers. Okay, that's gonna keep this from coming down uh, or pulling out, actually. We're also gonna glue this eventually, but uh, you'll notice on these pieces here, we do have um, some little score marks. So what you wanna do is you wanna put glue in between the little score marks here. You don't wanna put them on the outside of that, just keep them in between the score marks. Just like that, okay? And again, you gotta really wanna make sure that this is straight. Take a look at it from here. Make sure it's straight. And we're gonna take this piece and we're going to glue that down right there. So it's basically touching this piece, okay? Like that, I'm gonna flip this over. Again, just wanna make Double check and make sure that it's nice and even. Looks good. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this other piece, we're gonna put glue on this whole thing. And we're gonna kind of build a little sandwich here. We're gonna pop that right on top of the other piece. Okay. Press that down. There we go. Okay, so there we have it. And that is what that should look like. And now you can see, because of that little stopper, this thing is not gonna pull out. Okay, so now 
We're going to do the same thing with our little flowers. Now you want to make sure that the flowers are facing the correct way. So on this side, we want them facing towards us. We don't want them flipped around. Okay, so, okay. So what you can do is just take these and point them that way. And we're gonna grab these flowers. And again, we're gonna kind of pull these as far as it'll go. Okay, because we need a little stopper here. And with this one, we're just gonna do, we're just gonna do the one strip. Okay, so we should have some little score marks on these, and we do. So you want to keep your glue within the confines of the little score mark right there. Again, make sure you pull this as far as it'll go. And then we're going to take this and pretty much nudge it up to that little cutout and glue that right there. Okay. So we want that just to kind of stand up straight. Now, don't worry about it being completely straight. This is more or less just to keep it from popping out. Okay, so we've got that one in. Let me flatten this out real quick. We'll grab our other set of flowers now. And actually, what we can do is take this and flip it that way. Put our flowers in through here. Okay. Bring them down all the way as far as they'll go. And, oops, I don't want to destroy the flowers here. Okay, as far as it'll go, just kind of pull on it. And same thing with this. Find the little score marks there and get your glue in between the confines of the little score marks. Make sure this is pulled all the way down. This is where the other one is. We have to pull this up a little bit just to get it out of the way and then pop that right on there, right up to where that little slit is. It's underneath here. You can see it there, okay? And that will keep it from popping out. Let that set. <clears throat> Let's take a look at what we have now. Again, just make sure that your flowers are facing the right way on both sides, and they are, so that's good. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna grab these two pieces, and you'll notice that on the inside, I actually just took a little marker to darken these in a little bit. These little, these little uh, markers right here are gonna come in handy, and I'll show you why. But we're gonna glue these pieces to this tab here, okay? So go ahead and get your glue on this first tab. I'm going to spread that glue out to the very edges here. And then we'll take and connect this to this section here. Just make sure you get it nice and centered, nice and aligned. There we go. And I can put that down flat now. Okay, I'm going to flip this over. Do the same thing on the other side. So let's get our glue on this guy here. Spread that out. Okay. And it's going on like this. Get that nice and aligned with the very edge there. Give that a few seconds. And pop that down, press down on the tab. There we go. Okay. So eventually these are going to connect here in the center, like so. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna put glue on these tabs here. We want the tabs to be folded towards the walls that are closest to them. This is the bottom, this is the wall. So we want the tabs folded towards the walls and we're gonna put glue on here, okay? And then the tab, the, where the fold is, is gonna get glued to this side of the tab. So it's gonna go like that. It's gonna be, the tab's gonna be closest to this wall here. Okay, so I'll, I'll show you what I mean here. Let me grab my glue and put it on this tab. Okay, so remember this is the wall. These are the markers. The fold needs to be on the side closest to the wall here. 
Okay, so you literally are just going to take this and glue that using those little guides. Pop that right into place using those little guides. And I'm going to put that down flat on my table. Let me just do this real quick. And then I'll show you. Not going to hurt it at all. Give that a second. Okay, so looking at it from the side, you see what we have there. We have the flower portion sticking down and the little tab is little markers are on this side here of this thing and the little fold, the tab is on that side of the little markers. Okay, so I'll show you again on this side. We're gonna take and put glue on this tab here. Again, this tab is facing away from the center. Okay, and then we're gonna pop this right onto the little markers there. Like so, hopefully you can see that. And just press and hold that for a moment, let it set. Okay, so again, the actual tab right there is facing this wall and it's on this side, not on this side, but this side of the markers. The back of this is on, the markers are right here, right at the very edge of this and the tab is going this way towards this wall. Okay, so let's take a look and see what we have now. That's kind of what it should look like. Okay, so next thing we need to do, you'll see that there's a little crease here. This is actually gonna get glued to itself. Okay, so what we're gonna need to do is get some glue right on the little thin area that has score lines on, on either side. Okay, and we just need to kind of glue that to itself. So you can see in there, just along that little strip is where we have the glue. And just take and fold that up against itself there. And just press and hold that until it sets. Just on that little fold. Just to kind of make this a little recessed, okay? We're just recessing this. Okay, we're gonna go over to the other side now. And again, this little section here, in between here, you've got a score line here and the edge here. This little area is where we're gonna put our glue on the inside. Okay, so I'll probably just do this from a little bit on one side and a little bit on the other side. And I'll just use my finger to smooth that out or yeah, that's fine. Just take your finger, spread that glue nice and thin. Make sure you don't have glue all over your fingers before you do this next step. Okay, then we're gonna take this and just pinch this down up against its, itself, essentially. And keep that in place until it sets. Give that a few moments. So that's just kind of making it recessed. And be patient while that glue sets. It is kind of tugging on itself. So I want to give it plenty of time. Okay, so now all that's left to do is we're going to take and we're going to glue the actual well to the inside of one of these tabs. It doesn't matter which one. So go ahead and put some glue on the bottom of this. We'll spread that out nice and thin. Okay, and just pop that all the way flush with the bottom of this piece behind this tab. Make sure it's centered. And just press and hold that in place. You can kind of do that too if it helps. There we go. All right, now we're going to take this other tab and connect it to this to make that all one structure there. 
So go ahead and get your glue on this tab. Whoops. Spread that glue out all the way just to make sure everything is nice and precise. Line that up. Get that nice and centered. And you can kind of put that down on your surface now and press that together. There we go. Looking good. Okay, so we've got that all glued together. I'm probably gonna wait a few moments here and not jump the gun. Make sure that everything sits nicely. Okay, and then all that's left to do is close this up and we'll accomplish that by just putting glue. This thing's a little crooked. Just gonna put glue on these tabs here to close this up. So we'll start here. Just thin that out. Bring over the other side. If it helps, you can kind of fold it. Whatever you gotta do to get it there. Should be able to do this flat. There we go. And finally, just need to glue this side in place. And that's pretty much it. Of course, like with every card from Dreaming Tree, we do have a coordinating envelope that goes along with this. So I'll show you how that goes together here in just a moment. I'll just hold and press that down until it fully sets. Okay. And there's your beautiful card. Definitely different. And again, you should be able to fold it both ways and it should sit pretty flat. If it doesn't, just give it a little, give it a little press just to kind of loosen up the fibers a little bit. Should go both ways. Yep. And it does. So, you know, depending on how accurately you get everything glued, luckily paper is very forgiving. And you can kind of, well, you can play with it a little bit and yank on it to release the, the tension on the fibers to kind of spread them out a little bit. But there you have it. Okay. So there is our final product. And let's take a look at our envelope here. So this one's a little different but not difficult at all. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, you want to fold everything at the score marks, obviously. And this is wider than it is tall, so this is the orientation that you want it at. We're gonna take the, the actual, um, well, this part of the envelope, and we're going to anchor it to the bottom just to make it easier to assemble. So grab the bottom tab and get some glue on there. Spread that out nice and thin. And we'll take this and we're gonna center that nicely on that tab. Just like that. Okay. There we go. And then you can flip this down finish pressing that into place. And we're gonna take these two tabs now, we're gonna put glue on them, and we're gonna close this up, and then we'll put our little flap in place. So go ahead and get glue on these two tabs on the side. I'm gonna work a little bit of glue out to the edge as well. Okay, spread that glue out, nice and thin. It's actually staying kind of wet. 
Okay, so we're gonna close that up. Should pretty much fall into place exactly where it needs to go because it's smart like that. And because we do a good job with our engineering. So just keep holding that down. Okay, and then finally, we're gonna get our flap installed glued together. There we go. Okay. So our flap's going to go here. So we're going to glue that down first. Let me clean off my head here. So go ahead and get your glue on this tab. I had to make a larger envelope for this because while it does fold flat, it kind of takes up more room than a conventional card because of the, the manner in which it has to fold. So anyway, um, go ahead and get that glued down. You can actually do it this way, it might be easier. Just line that up, get it nice and centered, push as far as it'll go, make sure it doesn't go under, and just take that tab and press that down. We'll take a look at it from this angle. Give it a little nudge if it's a little bit off. There we go. Press that down. Now, of course, we have a little flower that we're going to glue right there. I'll probably throw some liquid pearls just above it just to kind of jazz it up a little more. So you've got some markers there to help you with the placement. Definitely use those to your advantage. Make everything nice and symmetrical. And then we have this little green piece. It's gonna go inside to give this kind of a two-tone effect. And I believe we have a little bit of that peeking out there too, so that's really nice. Grab your glue, work it around the perimeter first. All the way down to the score mark. And just work a little bit among the little nooks and crannies here. Maybe a little dash through the center. And then take this, you can lift this up, kind of push it up against the fold. Make sure it's centered. Pardon my head. Oops. And then just bring it down. And there you go. Just hold that down for just a moment. And there we go. And there is our envelope. Okay, beautiful. And there's our beautiful card. Again, you can fold it this way or this way. I probably would fold it this way just to protect everything else. Give that a good press and you can see. Actually, I think if you fold it the other way, it may not fit because it does take up more room. But there's your beautiful envelope. And I'm probably gonna add a little bit of bling to this thing here and there. Uh, but that is it. So anyway. Pretty straightforward, uh, a little tricky there when you're getting everything connected, but just take your time. I have no doubt that you'll be able to put it together. And uh, yeah, great little way to send someone um, a get well or good luck or whatever it may be. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. Uh, if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I would love to see it and so would our growing community. Head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Group, or you can type in this little URL here at the bottom of your screen. It'll take you right there. So that's it. Another one in the books. And as always, I look forward to crafting with you again.